I'm a, um, I'm a PhD student in the math department here at UCSD. Um, and for the past few months, I've been working on a project um, with collaborators at Pavel Pevsner's Algorithmic Biology Lab in St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, and our project's called Rosalind. It's named after Rosalind Franklin. Um, and our idea is that students can learn biology with programming on our site. So to give some context for how this is going to work, um, 2012 was a big year for online education and a big year for programming education. And a startup that uh, was at the intersection of these was Code Academy. So maybe uh, probably a lot of you are familiar with Code Academy. Um, they had this, it was a startup by two undergrads at Columbia. And they had this great idea, to, marketing idea to say, make coding in 2012 your New Year's resolution. So it kind of went viral. Um, a, a bunch of notable people tweeted it. Um, probably most famously, Mayor Bloomberg, who halted his war on big gulp sodas to say that he was going to learn to code. Um, I'm not sure how he found the time to do that, but they think that uh, programming is going to be the literacy of the 21st century. Um, a group that agrees is the Estonian government. So another random news story from 2012 is that Estonia has created a pilot program to teach six-year-olds how to program with the hope that over the next five years they're going to have K-12 programming at every, in every year. Um, and then, of course, the, the big players in the MOOC market, Coursera, Udacity, edX, they jump in with their own programming for novices courses. So to give you an idea of like where Rosalind fits into this, um, our, our goal is that scientists need specialized BS education. So for too long, it's been the case that you have a dry lab and a wet lab, and they don't really <laughs> understand what the other one does. Um, and our hope is that the 21st century is going to call for a new brand of researcher who, who understands the algorithms underlying what's going on in the biology and um, algorithms, people who are maybe able to innovate in the lab as well. So I'll just give you a short uh, walkthrough of kind of how our project is set up. We have a list of problems. As of this morning, we have 94 problems. And the problems are set up the same way. So it's a computational problem, but it starts with a bio introduction. So this is just the first problem. So it's a, a rapid introduction to molecular biology. Um, it talks you through the structure of what is happening now. Looks like it may be working now. So you go through this. We have glossary items. You can click on them and expand to see more. We have specific figures for each problem. You can click back and forth between the figures and get a caption. So we've tried to make it a user-friendly experience. The idea ultimately, though, is that th once you've read through the biology, you get a computational problem that relates to it. So this is our introductory problem. So it's just you're given a string of A's, C's, G's, and T's, and we ask you to return the frequency of each character. So we give you a sample data set and ask, um, and tell you how we want you to format your output. And then you go off and you program an arbiter, a general solution to this problem. So if you get stuck, we've got like a questions forum for you to interact with other people and vote up and down comments and find out um, what other people are struggling with. But then the idea is you can use any language. Um, and so once you've, you've sort of um, figured out how you, you specifically want to implement the solution, um, <laughs> you say, I'm ready to try a real data set. And we give you a .txt file with just a very long string. You have a five minute time limit, so we uh, encourage efficient solutions, which is not really relevant for this problem. And then you go off and run the code on your machine. And then you come back and, and input your solution. So it's relatively straightforward, I think. And we, we allow for users to input their code, too. So we have a solutions forum where people can discuss solutions that they have. Um, they can vote up or down code. Um, and you can see how other people have solved the problem. So what we really like about the project is that it's not just a collection of independent problems. Um, the, the problems are actually collected into a tree. So there's a learning tree that will build up um, the user's biological and computational knowledge concurrently. Uh, so here they are assembled in the tree. And you're only allowed, so I've, I've solved that problem and it turned green. Um, and then we're allowed to move on to the next problem. 
We also group problems by topic, so if you want to just solve alignment problems or just problems that are on uh, genome assembly or problems in probability, you're allowed to just do those. Also, we're, we've started to implement a tutorial in Python so that students don't have to leave our site um, in order to, to learn just basics of Python. So it's kind of our preferred language, and we set it up the same way. Um, this is just a simple task where we ask students to um, run Python on their, on their machine the first time and set it up and just type import this. Um, as we're growing our user community, we've got a uh, function for users to actually start suggesting problems on their own. Um, so here are three problems that have already been accepted by us that have been suggested by users. So we have an interface for people to write up their own solution, and this is the final product that we're working on at the moment. Here it's just calculating Euclidean distance between uh, two proteins. And then some, uh, some statistics that we have. We have a large number of users from a wide, wide range of countries. As you go through the project, you get badges based off of the number of problems that you've solved in each, in each little section. And then we've got these kind of cryptic achievements. So each achievement um, has, a, has kind of a little, a little message that you're supposed to figure out exactly what it is that you're supposed to do to get the achievement. So we really like these. And then our glossary is really big. Um, we feel like it's a pretty, pretty extensive resource for people who want to just see uh, terms from molecular biology or the algorithms of bioinformatics. So one thing that we're working on at the moment is this Roslyn faculty function where you can go through and create uh, automated homework classes for students. So the idea would be um, we want to grow this and make this a, a standard bioinformatics resource used in, in universities. So I'm just showing the creation of a test class um, here. You create the start and end dates for the course. I was cruel enough to have this one end on Christmas. And then once the course is created, you're taken to a, uh, we need, we're planning on making this more interactive, but you're allowed to select the problems that you like. So if, as you've, you've seen the site, you have a list of problems that you think are most relevant to your course. Um, you simply select those, those problems for your class, and we're going to make a sub-Roslyn for you, so like a private Roslyn interface for that specific class. I probably added too many problems, but we're going to be on time. <coughs> So once we apply the changes, we can go to the, the home room for the, for the classroom and see that we're, we're working on, we have a, a private questions form, a private solutions form. We'll have a way, a resource for, for professors to add um, their own homework assignments uh, to the site. And so to enroll students, you just uh, copy and paste this link and send it to, in an email to them. So that's the site. Um, we haven't really actively marketed, marketed the site at all. Um, but we've, we've nevertheless, over the past couple of months, built up that's up to 3,700 active users on six continents. Um, so we have pretty good representation from around the world. Uh, but we're hoping to grow the site further. And so where are we going to take it in the future? Um, well, we've had a bunch of people come to us and say, we really love the Roslyn site, but it's very bioinformatics specific, and we'd like to see the same thing done to field X, so machine learning or statistics or physics or chem informatics. And so we'd like to facilitate the creation of Roslyn spinoffs that sort of um, fall under the Roslyn umbrella. I think that open sourcing the projects, project will help with this. Um, and then another thing that will be able to tie projects like this together, so if we have several Roslyn projects, um, we'll need to expand our CS-specific education. So right now we just have a number of, um, a, number, a disjoint collection of problems. They're tied together, but we require the student to go through and learn the ideas underlying the algorithms on their own. So we want to have, um, uh, expand the site so that we actually actively teach students. Um, so here are the, my collaborators. I'm the only non-Russian member of the team. <laughs> um, maybe you could have guessed that from the photos. We're HHMI funded um, as well as the Russian Ministry of Education. Um, and then we don't have time for questions, I've learned. But um, we're on Twitter and Facebook, and I'll be at lunch. So um, we're welcome to, we'd love any input that you guys have. Please feel free to take a look at the site and let me know what you think. Um, it's a big, big uh, moment for us because if you just Google Roslyn, we're the first result. So we're happy about that. Okay, thank you.